I am ZW and today we are recreating some of the most iconic bucket old soldiers scenes by posing them digitally and printing them out because I'm obsessed with recreating everything from the Toy Story movies. But first, let's talk bucket. The Toy Story collection ones are just too short and a quick Google search brought another bucket to my attention, made by Timmy Toys. Look at the size differences, this is what we should have gotten from Tinkway. Timmy Toys came with much more than just soldiers. It came with two aircrafts and a tank, some kind of mountain diorama and even decals. The soldiers came in two colours and they are a little bit larger and more detailed than the Toy Story ones. But those are not important, all we need is the bucket. Now that we have the bucket, we need the soldiers. One of my favourite scenes is when the soldiers carry the baby monitor out of Andy's room and it has always bothered me that I couldn't post them like that ever since I found the monitors so I'm going to correct that today by using the models from Kingdom Hearts 3. These models are amazing, they even have the untrimmed mole lines just like in the movies which is ultra accurate and I can't believe I'm going to say this but I have to make it less accurate by removing them because they are too thin and it might affect the print result. I know, I'm disappointed in myself too. Let's move on to posing them. I'm thinking maybe bending the legs first, then bend the body back in front, uh, nope. Split the legs, flatten the feet and yeah. For the arms, I am adding a cube so that he has something to hold on to while I pose. Slowly adjusting the arms, then the elbows, then the wrist, one step at a time. Then I realized I was following the wrong reference photos because this is what I wanted instead. It's okay, just flip the palms and make the adjustments accordingly. For the left side of the monitor, I wanted to give some variations, so I'm making small adjustments like moving the hands upwards and tilting the head downwards. There's really no right or wrong since they're in a live mode and actually hopping around, so as long as they can carry the monitor, I am happy with it. The rifles on the other hand are all facing the same direction, so we can't just mirror it and call it a day, uh, we have to deal with them separately. With the new soldier done, I'm again mirroring it back to the right side for my third soldier. And all we need to do is to mix and match until we have six. What I also realized is that the pouches on their belts are supposed to be on the same side, so we have to flip them over. To make sure that we have the right scale when printing, I'm going to scan a soldier with our POP3 scanner. We don't need it to be very detailed because it's just for size reference, so I'm not bringing out the mini. The next thing that I am scanning is a jump rope because they also used it to slide down to the first floor and that is giving such Mission Impossible vibes, I have to replicate it as well. With all that in our arsenal, it's time for another posing session. This one I struggled a little bit because his uniform is a little bit warped and I don't really know how to replicate that. In the end, I mutilated his body 90 degrees, then lifted up his skirt and went with the flow. Spreading his legs to touch the rope and bending the other to make it look cool and adjusted his butt, folded his arms to hug the rope and did the same for the other arm. That's about it really. Again, for variation purposes, I mirrored him over and gave them separate rifles. And we are done. For the rope, the closest I could find with a similar red pattern is this. I don't know if there's one with this exact red handle, so call me crazy, but I'm going to 3D print it myself. It's not a hard shape to model, just follow the curves and add in the ring in front. One question that was on my mind when I was making this was, how do I insert the rope? original one unscrews from the front and this red one doesn't have that head anywhere. So what I did was to make an opening at the back. It's quite a complicated process digitally but in layman's terms, I hollowed the entire model that inserted a cap at the back. Last but not least, how could we forget the broken and flattened soldier that Andy's mom gifted to us? The Disney store did give us one but I wanted it to be more accurate to the movie. So this is the version I am making. By now, I'm an expert at posing soldiers. So this is pretty fun. You literally throw him face down, rotate his upper body up and move his hands accordingly. One to support his body and the other upwards holding the minesweeper too. And that's just a long pole bent in half and a circle at the end. Make him frown a little and we can get it ready for printing. 
Needless to say, the mighty 8K build plate is big enough for all the soldiers that I want to print. I hollowed the cap and prepared the support, and we will let the printer do its job. While we wait, I want to make the label for the bucket by scanning the Toy Story Collections version. To my surprise, it's not exactly a straight label and has a slight curve to it. There's probably some signs here that I'm not understanding, whatever. The original was 9cm long and I measured the new bucket and it's 12cm, so I'm just gonna scale it up. But upon closer inspection, I realized that the pattern is not accurate to the movie, so I have to make my own curves one at a time. Redo the colors and the stars. It ended up being too long for my printer, so I decided to visit a printing shop to get them printed for me. And this is what I received. It looks absolutely fantastic, and the bucket cover fit perfectly. But to my horror, the label was too long. I foolishly assumed that scaling the height was good enough, and I ignored the length. And now it's too long. So as I have always done in my projects, I'm going to cut the excess off, admire the front, and ignore the back. Well, the printing has completed and I'm loving how they look. They are mostly supported with light supports and we can easily peel them off without any damage whatsoever. Oh my god, look at the tiny support on the helmet. Wow, I did not expect it to be so thin, but I guess that's enough to do its job. Here's a close-up of the soldier and I must say, the details are great. The scale seems to be just right as well. They look like they all belong in the same bucket. And the rifle's length is good. But the base for mine was too thin, so they will be slightly shorter. That's fine. I'm not gonna reprint them. Let's just remove the support. This month is a little quiet. We didn't get any new members or patrons, so if you are enjoying our videos and want to help me make more, feel free to join these lovely supporters. I think our flattened man looks damn great, but unfortunately, we really do have a damaged soldier with half his rifle missing. That's okay, I'm going to cure them first in UV light and see what we can do to help him because Good soldier never leaves a man behind! Of course, every project comes with some non-optional sending. After priming them, it's clear that the damaged soldier is beyond repair. With all the print lines and the missing base, I'm afraid we will have to leave him behind. But not before I snip his little pouch off because one of the healthier soldiers lost his and I wanna glue it on him. I'm sorry, I'm not a good soldier. The painting this was complicated because I didn't have the exact same green. So I started with the closest green that I have with me. And this is the result after the first coat. It is rather light and I needed to add a darker green to the mix. After the second coat, it is still too light and it feels like it's missing some blue, so I added this to the third coat. In the end, I used one drop of these two and three of the darker one, and I think the colors are pretty close. Just gonna gloss it up and move on to the rope. I gave it an orange base first, then top it up with some red, and to mimic the wood grain of the handle, I used a big white brush and simply hand brushed it up and down. Go over it a few more times gently, or else this will happen. And that's all. I'm so happy we can finally pose them like they were in the movies. I love the new size accurate bucket with the new label and my fake wooden handle. It was such a fulfilling project. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to join our Patreon for more.